Hassling is not always the best option. At high level, you can, off, you can often see this in super grandmaster games that a Magnus Carlsen, a Nepo, a Caruana, an Ali Reza is not castling and it's move 21, move 26, right? And it's bewildering, but at the same time, there are reasons for this. Brussels, Belgium. I actually met a girl from Belgium today in class. Crazy. Brussels, Belgium. I actually said to her, I said, where are you from? The girl said, I said, no. I said, what's your accent? Because she spoke in English with, with an accent. She said, um, Belgium. I said, oh, Brussels? Like literally where this game was played. The only city I mentioned today was where this game was played. Yasser started with d5. I hope Yasser wins because Yasser is more of a, of a public figure, uh, strictly speaking here. So Yasser goes d4 and then Belyavsky re replies with d5. C4, this is called the Queen's Gambit. And uh, our friend Alexander Belyavsky responds with C6. Now C6, this is called the Slav Defense. It can transpose into the semi-Slav defense, which uh, would be the two pawns here. But this is the Slav defense for now, okay? So c6, knight c3, and then we have knight f6. Typical Slav, so far so good. This is the exchange variation, c takes and c takes. Now, this is usually, um, this usually results in draws, especially at the grandmaster level. And I hope Magnus or Hikaru could be in, in chat to confirm or deny. The reason is because both sides have very, very similar pawn structures, okay? So white is usually going to go e3 here, and black is usually going to go e6. And both sides are just going to have very, very similar pawn structures. And so this is usually, usually a tell that this is going to be a draw game. So if all pieces trade out right now, we trade out all minor pieces here. Queen, two rooks, everything gets traded out equally here. If everything gets traded out, this would be most likely a draw because the pawns and the kings like this is completely drawful, okay? So just an insider insider pick. GMs think about this in the opening. They, they know this. Bishop f4 is played. Very nice bishop on the diagonal. And we're releasing this bishop on this nice diagonal, potentially playing h3 later, to play e3, okay? Because if we don't play bishop f4, we play e3 now, it's kind of harder to get this bishop on a nice diagonal like the h2, b8 diagonal. And you want to release your bishop, right? So the order is very important here that you do bishop f4 first. Knight c6, development move, e3, and bishop f5, okay? These two bishops, they do the same thing, accomplish the same thing. This is super symmetrical, okay? e6 is played. Super symmetrical game, okay? You can see mathematics looking, looking at is that these are are super symmetrical games. It's crazy. Like you can look at the piece, it's a literal it's a literal mirror. If you were to cut the board in half here, so cut the board in half, this is a mirror looking back to the other side. Okay? This is why I so strongly feel like this is a draw initially. And now we have bishop b5. So bishop b5, I like this move. First of all, we're threatening uh, knight e5, which is kind of dangerous. It's defendable, you know, with rook c8 things. But it's still a very nice move. It's a nice pin on this knight. I like it. It's a good way to develop a bishop before castling here. Gaster so far, development-wise, is very, very strong. Knight d7 is played. Probably to take off this pin so that on knight e5, we can easily take on e5 with this c6 knight. And there's no pin on the king. Bishop b5, knight d7, castles is next. Okay, castles, nice move. Uh, you want to keep your king safe. Bishop e7, and now bishop to c6. Ooh. So already uh, we see Yasser delaying black's castling on the short side here by taking a piece which forces a response by Belyavsky. Which is interesting because now white have another move to play to threaten more things before the king castles. And you see it's going to be an occurring pattern in which this uh, king side will be toughened to castle. Rook c1 here. Interesting move. I think this lets uh, black castle. Uh, on castle, maybe knight a4 would come, and then we have a discovery on c6. Interesting. Rook c8 is played, so still no castling. Belyavsky is being very careful with this undefended c6 pawn and knows that on a potential knight a4, maybe even knight e2 uh, to go to knight g3, we have an attack on c6. So very nice defending here. So black not only defends this, Black wants to play c5 here, 
which is a really nice move and would take off from this weakness. This pawn is called a backwards pawn because it is backwards in the pawn structure. It has no pawns to support it uh, from behind. And so white can put easy pressure on the square of its equal here. And this is known as a weak pawn. So here Yasser played, followed through with the plan knight a4, okay? Knight a4, I think maybe it's to take up this c5 square, so kind of to prevent black to play c5. If c5 happens here, white is in a small advantage after takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. Okay, so the engine says, likes, likes very much b4. b4, and it's saying that we are at, wow! So on bishop takes, we have takes first here, queen takes, and now queen a4. Picks up the bishop, right? Nice little fork here. And this is the punishment for black not having castled. So before it's a tempo move. Okay, so the bishop needs to move. It prefers queen a4 first. Ah, and the reason why is that you keep the pressure on c8, and if the queen defends this check, well now the queen is pinned and does not defend the rook on c8 anymore, and we can take on c8 here, and we're up a rook. Well, we're up, we're up very much two rooks here, which is very nice. So don't want to do that, right? And which forces the king then to move up. And this king stays in the center. Mission accomplished. Black cannot castle. King in the center. We'll exploit this later on in the game uh, with more attacks, more tactics, right? You do not want to open up your position in a general consensus while your king is still in the center because bad things can happen as we see in this line. And so here, black plays a very active move, g5. Tempo move on the bishop. Very aggressive move. One would argue that this completely ruins black's castle. And that person would be right. Black cannot castle anymore. Black has, enta has entailed a new plan. This position could be nice for an h5, h4 push, which is true. So this g5 says, okay, black is not gonna castle. My king is gonna stay here. But it also says black is gonna attack the white pieces and come here with uh, a pawn storm. And so here g5, the bishop will move. It's a tempo move, right? So bishop g3. And exactly correct, h5 is here next move, threatening h4 on tempo with the bishop. And the bishop would have to go to an ugly square in which black would love to take it out of the game. Why does black want this trade? This bishop is simply way better than this knight. Okay? h5 is responded by h3. h3 gives a little breathing air for this bishop. And on h4, you know, bishop h2. And white would keep this diagonal and this bishop would be entirely safe on h2. This is a very common idea when your bishop is being chased by pawns. You play h3 for an escape square. The annotation says that knight c5 is better here. There, there's no worry for h4 because of bishop here and after knight takes, knight takes. Let's calculate together. These two knights on c5 and e5 are very strong. This is the argument here. Uh, but here h3 was played. g4, h takes, h takes, and now knight e5. Okay? Super nice square for this knight. So knight e5 threatening c6. And of course, oh, so this actually did happen in the game. Knight takes e5. After knight takes back, bishop takes back. And look at this. Suddenly, the initiative is back in the, bla in the black camp. So initiative is when you have the time to start the moves. Okay? And so black have had the initiative for a while here. Probably since this g5. They've been commanding this game. So g5, h5 threatening h4. This is all part of the initiative that black has. G, g4, h takes g4, all attacking something. And here we can see that with another move here, f6, we are once again keeping the initiative as the black pieces and keeping the tempo up because after bishop g3, it is again black to play. Castling is not always the best option. At high level, you can, off, you can often see this in super grandmaster games that a Magnus Carlsen, a Nepo, a Caruana, an Ali Reza is not castling and it's move 21, move 26, right? And it's bewildering, but at the same time, there are reasons for this. So it's part of a greater strategy to not castle sometimes. And here, Beliavsky speaks just to that King F7. King F7 was played. And King F7 here is a sensational move. Why? Because here... The king is entirely safe on f7. That's the number one thing we need to talk about. This king is safe. There is no piece that can come around this king. 
The white pieces are very far away from this king, and nothing is close to being opened on this king. No square, no nothing. Okay? So number one, this king is safe. And number two, you're looking at a very flow of your pieces. You're coordinating your queen, your rooks, everything is coming together. In fact, I would argue that I would take the black pieces here in this position after king f7. This has changed my mind about this game so far, which is crazy. King f7 responded to with rook e1. So rook e1, I think, is giving space for this king, maybe king f1, king e2. So this king cannot be on this open uh, file for the black pieces, a devilish open file, as we'll see later in this game. So rook e1, now black plays rook h5. And this is a simple, I think it's it's just, uh, it's, a, it's not even a rook lift, it, we're just doubling pieces here on the h file to threaten mate. So it's a move, to threaten the move, to threaten mate, okay? And on rook h5 here, we have queen d2. And here we have, wow, bishop e4. And so bishop e4, I think it's, it's kind of an obscure move because it's threatening something that we don't know. But this is the kicker after black goes king f1, because now, okay, we're threatening this, we're threatening check, and so Yasser escapes with king f1. And in this position, Beliavsky finds the move of the game, and I want you guys to try to find it, try to find the move in this position, black to play and win in this position, pause the video to solve the problem. In this position, uh, chat found it with flying colors, you guys. Bishop f3 is the move. Bishop f3 keeps the king in the mating net by taking out the escape square on e2. The king cannot go out of e2. And while this queen, looking like a queen, um, also refuses this escape square. Let's say the rook would move. The king still cannot escape. And even after takes takes here, the king still cannot escape here with uh, king, e, king e1, king d2 because of this queen. So it's Queen is part of the crime here of this bishop f3. Super nice move. And in fact, the computer says there is no way to defend this mate beneath four moves. And so bishop f3 is played here. What a sacrifice after takes, takes. So in the game, okay, Yasser resigned. Yasser Seyraran resigned here because it's completely over. Uh, you're, there's no way you're going to win. It's made in four for the black pieces. Done and done. But let's see what happens if you were to take this bishop. So if you were to take, g takes f3, still maintains this mating net here with this super, super hero pawn. There's no way to even target this pawn in time. We are threatening a maiden one that is emergency. And so you need to play king g1, or you need to do a giveaway move like bishop h4. That's just time and consumption, right? So king g1, and this is where it kicks in. You have this, this mate that's a bit slower, uh, but you have this fastest mate, queen h8. And now you're threatening mate on h1, doubling the pressure on this h1 square. And white, the white pieces are just clueless. There's no way that a bishop is going to come here. There's no way that this knight on a5, on a4 can come to g3 to defend h, h1. It's completely hopeless because we are targeting a square that is super hard to defend. So this is the power of just an empty attack on a square that's super weak. Okay, and so, so sometimes attacking a square can be worth much more than a full queen, than a knight, and this is the case. This is a weak square that we're attacking, and it's worth the entire game. Okay, and here the only move to do to defend here is bishop h2 or bishop h4. Uh, these are just, you know, waiting moves until, you know, rook takes, and here we're threatening mate, we're threatening mate, we're threatening, we're threatening a dozen mates, and whatever white moves here, whatever white moves here, literally any move, okay? E4, rook f1, rook e2. Giving the queen, there is still mate on h1. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of this super, super interesting game in which Black did not castle, okay? Broke the rules of chess. Started an attack with a king move. King f7. Opened some files and laid out a beautifully executed attack, all while their king was safe in the center.